All right, so once again, I'm working out of songbird carving. This particular book, the two, is new to me. There's the author. And this is what I want to show you. Here's the areas that we landscaped in. We carved these in and sanded these so there's humps and valleys, much like this. And then we drew in the feathers, much like that. So our next step is stoning in the feathers, like so. You want to start at the bottom and work your way up so you don't destroy your lines as you work. These are the different size ruby balls that I have. The middle size is the size I used for landscaping the belly of the bird. All right, so here we have our white ceramic stones and this is what we're going to be using to cut the lines in for the feathers. Now, here is a, a white ceramic ball for slight uh, like ripples and things like that. We got the small cone, which gives you the smallest diameter at the tip here. We're getting into tight areas for small lines. This bit here, which is a cylinder, which I will be using most of. It's a big cylinder for bigger birds. And we got these, which you use just the ends of these for cutting in lines for feathers. These work beautifully. So this is my micro carver. I will be using this instead of the Dremel. For the simple reason, you could use a Dremel, but um, when for extended period of time, you're using it in a pencil grip like this, the Dremel can get heavy and um, that's arthritis. So it, it gets to be painful holding anything heavy in between my fingers. This makes it a lot easier. So we'll be using this, ceramic bits, and we're about ready to get started. Here's a helpful temp tip. This is a burr cleaner. Now this works for stones and ceramic, not diamond, not ruby. It'll just wear those out. It'll wear out your bits. But for your stone bits, this little block, Dremel sells them, will clean them up. This particular one was so clogged it was just a solid gray color. It's a ceramic bit, but it's been used and put away dirty, basically. So we're gonna clean it up a little bit. It just takes a light touch. I'll show you how to do it. All right, so here's the dirty bit. Well, let's go ahead and turn it on. It's about medium speed. And we have the the stone cleaning bit here, or piece. You can already see the bit getting cleaner. So I got that. You want to keep your angle. This thing is a cone shape, and I want it flat on the end to be able to put these marks in. Now if you're really grinding away, you want to be careful to wear a respirator and glasses because it is an abrasive, you don't want to breathe it. Let's see how it, uh, how it cuts lines in. Not bad. 
So as I'm putting the lines for the feather in, I'm coming up in the deepest part of the cut is right up next to the feather that it's supposed to be going underneath of. Using the natural arc of my hand, no lines are straight on a bird, so Switch them up every once in a while. Right and left arcs. Some of these feathers are marching one side of it one way and the other side the other way so they come together. Or you can make them arch away from another, each one another and, and simply put a split down the middle. Doing a full variety. your chance to use your artistic license in this area and we're going to speed it up two times the speed I wish I really could work this fast be able to do these birds a lot quicker now once you're done working your way up burning you want to Come along every once in a while and just carry a line down through the next feather. It, it makes it lay down a little bit and um, it's more harmonious. So if you're interested in power carding, there's a video I want you to check out. It's called Intro to Power Carving Basic 101. It's on the YouTube channel Studio on the Lake. My friend Ben does it. He really digs in and does a thorough investigation on these machines and he's been using them a long time. So I would urge you to go do that. Check out that video. So while filming this, I didn't give it much thought. The, uh, the tool is pretty quiet that I use, but the, all the noise from the tool comes from the handpiece and the handpiece is close to the camera. So it sounds like it's loud on the video because it's so close to the camera, but it's really pretty quiet. The box makes no sound at all. In my upcoming videos, not only are we going to continue to work on the bird, but I'm also going to show you some changes that I'm going to make to my painting area. Um, I have a lot of reference material, so we're going to be organizing that. Uh, I'll just be showing these little clips of this stuff while I'm in the progress of working on the bird, um, I think it's going to be a pretty neat journey. So I hope you come along.
Okay, I just switched the tip. Put a little cleaner one in. Let's see if it makes a difference. So it's doing good. It, it's cutting about the same as the other one. But I'm pleased with it. It's doing a, a nice job. course while you're you're doing this just keep trying to think about the next step which is painting and how these lines are going to affect paint and how you're going to use the paint to make these lines better you're you're trying to tell a story with your with your carving and always try to think about the next step while you're doing what you're doing now this is advice from Floyd Schultz and at first I didn't understand it but once I started doing it I got it, and it does make a difference in how you work. I already drilled the holes for the eyes. If you want to see how to do eyes, I have a video called Eyes and Feet for Bird Carvings. Now these tail covert feathers are longer and bigger, but more, they have more movement. So you want to stone a lot of curves and, and swirls in this area. Now something that can really help you out as far as bird carving is study the anatomy of the bird. So the skeleton of a bird, you can go to Google skeleton of birds uh, and you can see you know, pictures like this and just sketch it, draw it out. It'll help you commit it to memory. So you can use calipers or you can simply use a Xerox copy and cut it up. And I use the glue stick to glue it on there. And here I'm just incising lines to show where the feathers are. You can also do this with uh, a burning pan. I've, I've done that before. It's very effective. I guess you're never too old to learn a new trick. You, you see how this small piece wants to move. I should have cut the, the smaller feathers first. But, you know, start at the very tip. Cut the small one. And if it falls off, that's fine. You already have the line in. And then move to the bigger ones. So this is a recent purchase. It's a cuts all bit. Uh, my friends over at Carving Fusion, Jordy, or Studio on the Lake, Ben, or Just Carve Rob, uh, they all use these cut saw bits, and they remove wood very quickly. Uh, they're great for moving along quick. And, and most bird carvers that carve professionally uh, they usually do the whole bird with a rotary tool. Uh, they start off with a coarse bit like a cut saw and a, either a Fordham or, or something that can handle that size bit. And they work smaller and smaller all the way down to the ram like I have. They also, all three guys, Jordy, Ben, and Rob all have 5% off. So if you go to their videos, buy your cut saws through them. So 
So there you saw the tail with the um, marks I burned in. And since I got the burner here, I'll go ahead and put uh, some splits into these belly feathers. And that really helps with the realism. And just like I did with the stoning bit, every once in a while I'll carry a line down through one feather into the other. It, uh, it just kind of brings it together and, and unifies it. I was watching YouTube the other day, and I tell you, I have to say, the, it's so enjoyable to watch woodcarvers work. They share what they're doing in, in general. Most of them share all their tips and, and, and little things that they do differently. And it's a joy to be a part of the woodworking community on YouTube. Uh, if you don't wood carve, it is one of the most enjoyable hobbies you can have. So I hope this video was helpful. Please like, share, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.